Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Collector John again, coming at you today with a simple request. Uh, please stop buying all of the Xbox 360 games. Thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, for real though, the Xbox 360 market has been having something of a renaissance recently, mostly because the Xbox 360 store is going to be closing in July. And because of that, the prices of certain Xbox 360 games have just been skyrocketing through the roof. And I don't know what to do about it. It's freaking crazy. I've seen people other than myself looking at Xbox 360 games in my local game stores, which is uh, unprecedented, to say the least. I'm usually the only one who cares about them. They're getting cleared out, man. They're getting cleared the frick out, man. What am I supposed to do? Xbox 360 is supposed to be my thing and now everyone's out there acting like uh, they always were collecting for the 360. I don't think so. I don't think so, bucko. No, I'm just kidding. I'm actually glad that other people are collecting for the 360. Uh, it's a really great console. The library is really amazing. I think it's about time that people uh, caught on and started to realize, hey, there's some like really fun stuff to collect for on the 360, and that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, anyway, today we're actually going to go out and hunt for some Xbox 360 games at a few of my local game stores. I figured if, uh, if everyone else is doing it, if it's the hot thing right now, I might as well do it too, even though I've been doing it for years. Uh, I can still go out and have fun looking for 360 games. And yeah, I've said this before, but I have like probably 90% of the 360 games that I'm interested in, but there's still plenty of titles out there that I'm looking for that I would like to add to the collection. So I think if we go out and hit up a few stores, we hopefully will be able to find a few that I've been looking for. And then also because of these recent price hikes, I feel like maybe we can find a deal or two if there's like a game that would have been priced recently that the game store hasn't caught on to yet. Uh, you know, maybe we might get a good deal on something that was cheap before and now is super expensive. I guess you could call that a deal. I don't know. So yeah, we're gonna get things started at a store that I've never been to in any of my videos before, and it is called Game Together MKE. It's a relatively new store. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, let's go check it out, see if we can find some hot Xbox 360 games. And here we are at Game Together Milwaukee. I actually haven't been to this store yet. It is a relatively new uh, retro game store for Milwaukee. Uh, but it has really good reviews, and people seem to really like it, so I'm super excited to check it out. Uh, yeah, it's looking really nice and well-organized on the inside. They have all these TVs set up with uh, various consoles. They have a couple arcade machines, which is really cool to see. And then back here, uh, they have a couple CRTs set up, hooked up to some retro consoles. And they had a great selection of Mountain Dew, which is great, because I'm something of a Mountain Dew connoisseur myself. I'm probably going to get that Frostbite flavor. So yeah, my first impressions of this place were really good. It seems like they had a decent selection of games. I know the owner said they'd be doing a restock soon, but uh, yeah, let's take a look around and see what we can find. And we're just going to get right into the Xbox 360 stuff. They had a few Xbox 360 games in the glass case here. Uh, Persona 4 Arena, I would like to have that on the 360, but I already have the PS3 version, so I'm probably going to pass on that one. They had a copy of the Orange Box here for $30. I think this game has gone up in price a little bit recently. I got my copy for like $15 a couple of years ago. They had some cool collector's editions up here. Uh, they had a collector's edition version of Halo Wars, which is pretty sick. Uh, I don't know if I'd want to pay $30 for that. I'm just not like the biggest Halo Wars fan, even though it's a cool collector's edition. Uh, they also had a Perfect Dark Zero collector's edition for $15. And this Grand Theft Auto 4 Episodes from Liberty City, I'm kind of interested in. I, I might pick that one up because I don't have Episodes from Liberty City yet. And then, yeah, just a few more things down here. Uh, Zone of the Enders HD Collection is pretty awesome. It's another one that I have on the PS3 already, so 15 is a is a decent price, but I'm going to pass just because I already have the PS3 version. They had a lot more Xbox 360 games in the back, but we're just going to keep looking through this glass case stuff here. Uh, a few interesting original Xbox games. I already have most of these. Uh, I don't have Blitz the League. I, it looks like that copy's $10. That would actually be a pretty good one. I didn't grab it, but that would be a good one to have for sure. NHL Hits Pro, another interesting sports game that I don't have. Uh, but yeah, otherwise not a ton on the original Xbox that I was interested in. Looking through the PSP and PlayStation stuff, they had a bunch of cool long box PS1 games. Uh, this game Thunderstrike looks pretty sick. Uh, I feel like any long box game for $10 is like, that just feels like kind of a steal to me. Uh, they also had Descent for 19 I I'm definitely interested in Descent. I really like those games. I played them on PC a long, long time ago, but I would like to check out that PS1 version. Then they also had a copy of Mortal Kombat 3 long box for $75. Uh, I feel pretty good about the fact that I found this game for $30 last year at a game store. I feel like that was kind of a steal for sure. And there was another glass case with a lot more PS1 and PS2 games. I was really uh, impressed with their selection here. They had a lot of cool stuff. 
Uh, I'm definitely interested in this copy of Animusha Dawn of Dreams. I'm probably not going to buy it today, but I like this series a lot. I think this was the last one that came out on the PS2. And then, yeah, just a bunch of classic PS1 games, Metal Gear Solid, Wild Arms, uh, Parasite Eve 2. I would love to have Parasite Eve 2. I'll probably never buy it because it's so freaking expensive. But uh, yeah, Parasite Eve 1 is amazing. I've actually never played Parasite Eve 2. I know it's like more of a survival horror game than the first one was, um, but it's one that I would definitely love to have in the collection. It's just a little cost prohibitive for me, I think. And then heading on to the back of the store, the owner told me they had most of their original Xbox and Xbox 360 games back here, so you know I had to go back and take a look. And yeah, there were a couple things that I was interested in. They had this copy of Dark Star 1 Broken Alliance for $13. I apologize, this is really hard to see. But yeah, Dark Star 1 was a PC uh, space flight simulator that they ported to the Xbox 360, and I really like stuff like this, so I'm very likely... Uh, gonna pick this game up. It looks really cool. They also had a copy of Vampire Rain. I'm definitely interested in this. It is a survival horror game for the 360 that I don't think is very good, but I still want it. Uh, also, Doom 3 BFG Edition, another one that I just haven't picked up yet for some reason, but I would really like to have this one as well. They also had this Skyrim Special Edition, but I think it was just the box. Uh, for $5, I, you know, that's not bad for a box these days, but I, I don't feel like I really need this, so <laughs> I'm not gonna spend $5 on this box. And then lastly, we just did a really quick run through of these original Xbox games. Uh, most of these I already have, but I did see they had a copy of 13 here for $10. I've been really wanting this game and I, I didn't buy it. I don't know why, because $10 is a pretty decent price for it. Uh, yeah, I should have grabbed this one. Alrighty folks, we're back from Game Together MKE. Picked up a couple things that I'm gonna show you and talk about. Uh, I know I usually sit at my desk while I do the pickup review, but um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it standing today because I, I feel like standing, I don't know. It's my channel, I can do whatever I want. Okay, starting off, I grabbed this game, Dark Star 1 Broken Alliance, and uh, I really like that they put all their games in these nice plastic sleeves. Uh, so let's take this one out and see how it's looking. Yeah, so uh, this case is looking really nice. It's in really good shape, and I do believe this came with the manual as well. Yes, it did. And the disc, let's take a look at this disc. Disc is looking really nice too, so no complaints there at all. This is a 360 game that I've actually never heard of. Uh, I saw it and I was like, oh, that looks like maybe kind of a cool like space sim kind of thing. That looks interesting. And that's pretty much exactly what it is. Uh, this game was originally released on PC and then it was ported to the 360. So the Xbox 360 version is like a little dumbed down, I think. It's not like a super deep uh, space flight simulator, but I played a bunch of it and it really does have some honest to goodness, like real actual space sim stuff in it that you wouldn't expect to see in a console game. Uh, like it has a target list, it has a star map where you can hyper jump to different points across the galaxy. You have to request permission to dock at space stations, there's a trade economy, just a bunch of stuff like that that makes me feel like, wow, I'm playing like Wing Commander or Elite Dangerous or something, you know what I mean? There are a few things I don't like about it, like I wish you had more control over your thrust and I feel like the default thrust speed is way too fast. Um, it also has a really slow start with a lot of tutorials. But overall, I think this game is really cool. I think it was worth the $13 that I spent on it and I don't know if I really have any other like good space sim games on the 360. Uh, if you can think of any, let me know in the comments. I'm sure there are some, but I just can't think of any other ones off the top of my head. So um, yeah, this game is really cool. I, I would recommend it for sure, especially if you like stuff like uh, Freelancer or Wing Commander or like X-Wing or TIE Fighter, stuff like that. Um, this definitely falls into that same vein. It's like a little shallower, but it's still really, really cool. And then I also grabbed this game, Vampire Rain, which I, I've seen this around before, but I just haven't gotten around to picking it up yet. Um, so I'm gonna pull it out of this sleeve and see what we're looking at here. Uh, this feels like it might not have a manual in it. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, so no manual in this one. Also, the <laughs> this disc, okay. Some people would probably hate this, but I actually really like this. So this disc is stamped with uh, family video branding on it it is so this was obviously a uh, family video copy at one point which is awesome because i i love family video i used to go there all the time if you're from the midwest you probably know about family video uh, if not you have no idea what i'm talking about but it's basically just a regional blockbuster they were actually open for a while like they were open longer than blockbuster but they shut down like a couple years ago i think uh all the stores are gone now so yeah but anyway vampire rain uh this is ten dollars i haven't played this yet so i don't really know much about it other than i'm pretty sure it's a very bad survival horror game which uh, sounds great to me because I like survival horror games even if, even if they're bad. Uh, I want to have like all of the survival horror games that I possibly can on the 360. And this is one of those games that uh, never came out on PC. It only came out on the 360 and PS3. Um, so, you know, it, if history is an indicator, like uh, horror games that don't come out on the PC that aren't readily available, 
and only came out on older consoles, those tend to appreciate in value eventually. Uh, this one definitely hasn't yet, and I'm not saying for sure that it will, but it's just like, that seems to be a trend with retro games is that these old horror games always end up going up in value. So uh, again, I don't think it's very good. I don't think people really liked it. So it's more of a collection game than I am excited to play this kind of game. You know what I mean? And then the last thing that I bought at Game Together MKE was uh, pretty dumb. I'm not afraid to admit when I make dumb purchases, uh, and that's what happened here. So I bought, <laughs> I bought this Xbox 360 memory card which uh, let me hold up the camera so you can get a good look at it there. So let me tell you why this is dumb. Uh, so first of all, you can transfer saves between Xbox 360 with any, any old USB flash drive. You do not need to buy these proprietary memory cards to do it. Um, I bought this because I thought it would be fun to use the actual proprietary tech to transfer my saves around between my different Xbox 360s that I have around the house. So I have one here in my office that is an old arcade model. I have another one in the living room that's a slim. Uh, and then upon doing further research after I bought this, I realized that uh, these are not compatible with the uh, slim Xbox 360 at all. Um, I have no use for this whatsoever, and I spent $10 on it. So, yeah. You know, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes I buy stupid things because I didn't do my research. So hopefully this maybe saves some of you from buying this if you had the same train of thought that I did. Um, pretty, pretty dumb. I don't know. It's a dumb thing to buy. Alrighty, so those are my pickups from Game Together MKE. Just a couple of cool little things here. And uh, yeah, we're going to go hit up another game store now. We're going to go to my uh, my old stomping grounds at the Mega Media Exchange Franklin location. Been to the store in a lot of other videos, but we're going to go check it out today. See if they have any good 360 stuff in stock. Let's do it. Ah uh, yes, my old stomping grounds, the Franklin Mega Media Exchange. I go to the store a lot, I usually find some cool stuff here, so let's take a look inside and see what they got. Well, this Xbox 360 section is actually looking a little sparse today, uh, but we do end up finding a couple things, so we're, we're not going to give up just yet. I saw they had this game Child of Eden here, which I feel like my eyes kind of always glaze over this because uh, just the cover's kind of bland and it says better with Kinect on it. But then I realized this game is actually directed by Tetsuya Mitsuguchi, who directed uh, Rez, which Rez is a freaking amazing game. So for $7, I think I'm actually going to give this one a shot. Oh, actually on the bottom shelf, they had a better copy of it that didn't have the uh, sticker residue. So we're going to grab this one instead. This one, uh, this one looks pretty nice. I always get uh, Dark Sector and Dark Void mixed up for some reason. I, I know they're like not the same game at all, but I just always get these two games confused. And I also can never remember if I have either of them. So I think I have Dark Sector, but I don't have Dark Void yet. So we might pick up this copy of Dark Void. But yeah, most of this Xbox 360 section was just uh, many, many copies of very common games that I already have. Uh, you know, like a thousand copies of Dishonored here, a billion copies of Skyrim and Oblivion. Uh, pretty typical fare for the Xbox 360 here. Oh, here's something interesting though. They had a uh, Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition. I don't have the Ultimate Edition of Fallout New Vegas, which includes the DLC. Uh, and I think $12 is actually a pretty decent price for this game now. However, I noticed that it was actually missing uh, Disc 2, which that's the disc that I want because that's what has the DLC on it. I went up to ask if they had Disc 2 in the back or something and they said they didn't have it. Uh, they did offer it to me for a discount, but since I already have Fallout New Vegas, I passed. And here's another shelf with some more Xbox 360 games. Uh, I picked up this copy of Rise of the Tomb Raider only because I actually didn't know that they put this game out on the 360. And I feel like this was a pretty technically demanding game, like even on the Xbox One and PS4. So I'd be interested to see what that looks like, but I'm not going to grab it today. Speaking of Tomb Raider, way on the bottom shelf here, they had the Tomb Raider reboot from 2013 for $3. Uh, again, I'd be interested to see what this looks like on the 360, but I would much rather play the PS4 version. And right next to it, they had Tetris Evolution, which is a version of Tetris that I would love to play on the Xbox 360. Unfortunately, this one, they didn't have the disc for it either. I don't know if someone was just walking around stealing all the discs out of these cases, uh, but yeah, that was kind of a bummer. I was also kind of interested in this copy of Sleeping Dogs for $6, but that case was pretty terrible. Uh, this sniper Ghost Warrior game. I don't even know what this is. Is it like off-brand Sniper Elite? I spotted a couple uh, slightly pricier 360 games. They had Lord of the Rings Conquest, which I got at Goodwill last year for $3. And then also Chronicles of Riddick Assault on Dark Athena. I've been looking for this for freaking ever. And I literally just ordered it off eBay last week. Uh, but I actually paid $17 for it on eBay, so I don't feel that bad about it. I mean, I rather would have bought it here, but yeah, that I feel like that always happens to me. Before we head out, I just want to check out this PS2 section because I saw they had a couple interesting things here. Uh, they had this copy of Time Crisis 3, which is cool. Uh, GTA Liberty City Stories for the PS2. Also pretty cool, but I would rather have the uh, PSP version of this. So I think we're going to pass on this one today. Uh, pretty nice complete copy, though. That looks pretty good. Ooh, here's a really good one. Maximo Ghosts to Glory. Uh, I have Maximo Army of Zen already, but I don't have this one. Uh, so I would really like to grab this. I think we might actually pick this one up because these games are fun. 
Uh, and yeah, I, I like cool PS2 games like this, so we're gonna grab it. Okie dokie, we are back from Mega Media Exchange Franklin, and I grabbed three Xbox 360 games and a PS2 game. Let's take a look at what we picked up. Starting off, I grabbed this copy of Dark Void that they had there for $5. Um, this is a pretty nice looking, uh, well, I was gonna say nice looking, but honestly, this manual is pretty roached. Um, but the game itself, I think, is totally fine. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good looking game. In this game, I honestly wasn't sure if I had it or not. I couldn't remember, um, but I ended up grabbing it just because it was $5. And then when I got home, uh, I realized that I actually did not have have a copy of this currently. Um, so I'm glad I picked this one up. And the main reason I grabbed this was actually that uh, Capcom uh, just delisted this from all of their digital stores uh, recently. It hasn't really gone up in price or anything. Like the physical copies are still kind of about what they were before. They may have gone up like a dollar or two, but the market for these is still pretty much what it was before. Uh, but stuff like this where you're not able to get it digitally, you know, I just want to have a physical copy of it if I ever do want to play it. Um, I really honestly know nothing about this at all. Uh, let's read the back of the box here. It says the first fully 3D action shoot Shooter. I don't know about that. Step into the void, a sinister parallel world of hostile aliens, powerful weapons, and deep mystery. Uh, yeah, that sounds cool. I don't know. I think it's like a cover shooter or something. It's probably fun. I don't know. If you've played this, let me know. Um, it looks like it might be interesting, and again, I just wanted to own it because I know it's been delisted everywhere. So yeah, we picked up Dark Void for five bucks. And I also grabbed Darksiders, another $5 game. Uh, the only one of these I've played is Darksiders 2, and I like Darksiders 2. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so I wanted to finally grab this for the 360 collection. Uh, this game you can still get it on PC or like wherever. I think it's also been remastered on a few modern systems as well. But you know, I always like having my Xbox 360 version of a game. Yeah, uh, nice complete copy. This one actually does look really nice. Manual's in good shape. Disc looks pretty good as well. And uh, yeah, Darksiders is cool. I'm excited to check this out. And the last 360 game that we picked up, uh, it was $7. And this might be my favorite game uh, that I picked up for this entire video. Uh, I really, really like this game, like a lot more than I thought I would. And that game is Child of Eden. Uh, so this game is made by the same guy who made Rez, and I'm gonna mess up his name, but it's uh, Tetsuya uh, Mizuguchi, I think. But yeah, he created Rez and Luminez. I freaking love both of those games, especially Rez. And uh, this game feels like, like it feels like a sequel to Rez, it really does. And I think a lot of people might see this uh, sitting on a shelf at a store and see this like better with Connect text on it and then be like, no, I'm not going to play a stupid Kinect game. Uh, but I'm telling you, you should actually buy this and play it because this game is really, really, really freaking good. Yeah, so this game, it's it's a lot like Rez, but it just feels a lot more modern and updated. And it is kind of a rail shooter in the same way that Rez is. Um, the difference is that you actually have two weapons in this game instead of one. Uh, and that kind of just like adds a layer of depth to the game. The visual feedback in the environments is just like really, really insane. And really the vibe of this game and like the design of the environments really reminds me a lot of Tetris Effect. It's just really beautiful. There are these like amazing colors and particle effects all over the screen and it's just like the visual feedback is so amazing. It has these like really insane FMV cutscenes that just feel so 2011. Like <laughs> they feel so of their time. And like 2011 doesn't feel that long ago to me, but when I see these cutscenes, I'm just like, oh yeah, that is like, that is some 2011 shit right there. And the music is really incredible. The visuals are amazing. The boss fights are just insane. Uh, I feel really dumb that I didn't know about this before now because it's it's freaking awesome. And like, you can totally just play this on a controller. You do not need a Kinect sensor to play it. Um, I played it on a controller and I thought it was totally fine. And it's also backwards compatible on the Xbox One and the Series X. So this, I think this is a really, really good pickup. Uh, if you like Rez like I do and you didn't really know that this was a successor to Rez, um, I really think you should play this. It's really awesome. It's cheap. But yeah, Child of Eden, freaking awesome. I highly, highly recommend it. And then yeah, lastly, at Mega Media Exchange, we grabbed this PS2 game, uh, Maximo Ghost to Glory. But yeah, for some reason I have the sequel to this game, Maximo Army of Zen, but I didn't... For some reason I already have the sequel to this game, Maximo Army of Zen, but I don't have the first one, Ghost to Glory. But I think Ghost to Glory, like I think people actually like this one a little more. Um, and I really like it. I played some of it. I think it's really cool. It kind of reminds me of like Jack and Daxter mixed with uh, Medieval for the PlayStation 1. Uh, and this is an offshoot of the uh, Ghosts and Goblins series. So if you played those older games, uh, you probably like this one too. Uh, me personally, I like 3D platformers more than I like old 2D platformers. That's just like a personal thing for me, I guess. And uh, it, it's a lot of fun. So I, it's like a kind of a cheaper PS2 game. I think it's uh, it's definitely a good one to add to your collection if you don't already have it. All right, so those are the pickups from Mega Media Exchange. Uh, yeah, I, these three Xbox 360 games, I spent like less than $20 on them. So I'm pretty stoked about that, um, especially Child of Eden. Like again, I just really freaking like that game a lot. Uh, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm really excited to play more of it and just get through the rest of the game. Uh, it's pretty awesome, so. All right, we're gonna hit up one more store. Uh, we're gonna go to um, 
Oh, I can't remember what it's called. What is the store called? I'm gonna go check out the Turning Page, which is actually a comic book store that's really close to where I live. I haven't been in there in a while, but I remember last time I was in there, they had a bunch of um, Xbox 360 games, and I think some of them might be ones that went up in price a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna go check that out, see if they still have some of those, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what they have, I guess. Before we hit up the Turning Page, I just really wanted a quick stop by my local Goodwill right down the street and just see if they had any Xbox 360 games sitting around. I do have pretty good luck with finding Xbox 360 games at this location, so maybe we'll get lucky today, I don't know. And I did see they actually had a couple things here. So they had a copy of Call of Duty World at War, which I already have this, uh, but that is a pretty nice looking copy of Call of Duty World at War. They also had Grand Theft Auto 4 and Sleeping Dogs. So yeah, even though uh, more people are starting to collect for the 360, it seems, uh, we can still find a 360 games at Goodwill pretty easily, at least at my Goodwill. Uh, it's a pretty decent looking copy of Grand Theft Auto 4. I do already have Grand Theft Auto 4, so we're not gonna pick this one up today. Uh, and then, yeah, there's this copy of Sleeping Dogs here, which, you know, I saw this at Mega Media Exchange for $6 with a crappy case, and I didn't buy it. But uh, I think for $3 from my local Goodwill with a better case and the manual, uh, yeah, I think we're actually going to grab this one. Just kidding. The disc is completely destroyed, so we're going to leave it behind. It probably still work, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to buy that. I, I don't care that much about Sleeping Dogs. And here we are at the turning page, which is mostly a comic book store, but they do sell some video games as well. Uh, so we're going to take a look through this Xbox 360 section and see how it's looking. And right off the bat, I see a couple interesting things in here. So I saw they had a copy of Blue Dragon for $20. I think that's actually a pretty decent price for this one. This is one of those uh, Xbox 360 exclusive JRPGs, and I would really be interested in putting this in the collection. So I think this is going to be a pickup for sure. Ooh, I see another thing down here that I'm really interested in. Mayhem. Uh, this game, I've been looking to pick this one up for a little bit now. I saw it at uh, Respawn Retro Games in West Bend, but didn't pick it up that time. And I feel like today's the day that we're going to grab this one, because I am really interested in playing this game. And lastly, uh, yeah, we didn't do a ton of filming in here, but I also saw they had a copy of Infinite Undiscovery for the Xbox 360, uh, which is another JRPG uh, Xbox 360 exclusive that I'm super interested in picking up. So yeah, I ended up grabbing all three of these, and uh, we're going to head on back to the Collector John studio. I'm going to talk about these games a little bit more in depth. So yeah, let's take it back to the studio. Okie dokie, we're back from the turning page. We grabbed three games that we're gonna take a look at. And uh, yeah, they had some good stuff there. I'm pretty excited to uh, show you guys what I picked up. Starting off with Infinite Undiscovery, which is an Xbox 360 exclusive published by Square Enix. And uh, this game was developed by Tri-Ace. They're most known for the Star Ocean series. And you know, I've talked about JRPGs before. I've talked about how I have trouble starting them because they're just really freaking long. And the idea of like starting a new JRPG is always just really daunting to me. But at this point, I have kind of a lot of JRPGs on the Xbox 360. Um, there are kind of like more of them than you think there would be on the 360. Like, I think during this time, Microsoft was like really trying to push uh, this console in Japan, which is why they were trying to get all of these exclusive JRPGs on it. It never really worked out for them, but at least they gave it a shot. Um, anyway, I don't really know a lot about this game. I know that it has real-time combat. I know that I, I think people like it. I think it's pretty well regarded. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice looking copy. It has a really, really thick manual. Check out that manual. That's a thick one, all right. Uh, looks like we have some kind of registration card in here, which is cool. I like having stuff like that. And uh, we got two discs in there because uh, the Xbox 360 didn't have Blu-ray, so they had to put everything on multiple discs. Uh, so yeah, hopefully someday, maybe when I'm retired, I'll just go and play through uh, every JRPG that I own on the 360, and this will be one of them. <laughs> I mostly just want to have like all of the Xbox 360 exclusive games in my Xbox 360 collection, so that's the main reason why I buy stuff like this. Uh, next up, I'm pretty stoked about this one. Uh, I saw this at another store that I went to recently and I didn't buy it, and then I kind of regretted not buying it. Uh, but then I saw it at Turning Page and I was like, okay, gotta pick this up immediately. Uh, and that game is Mayhem for the Xbox 360. I spent $20 for this copy. Um, it does have the manual, which is nice, and a pretty good looking disc as well. Yeah, not bad. This game was developed by Evolved Games, and I think this was actually the last game that they put out. Uh, but yeah, I played some of this. I think it's really, really cool. It's like kind of an arcadey, um, demolition derby, racing kind of game. It has this sort of black and white aesthetic to it. It's one of those games where it's in black and white, but then certain things are like red. So you have these red colors just kind of accenting the black and white. I feel like that was sort of a trend in like the late 2010s where a lot of games were doing that, like, uh, you know, Saboteur or that Mad World game for the Wii. I think that game did something like that too. But yeah, I really like how it looks. It kind of also has this sort of like comic book stylistic flair to it uh, that I think is really fun. Oh, and another thing about this game that I, I just remembered. So this was actually uh, a 3D game. So it came with a pair of 3D glasses. Uh, this copy that I have does not have the 3D glasses, but that's that's totally okay because I feel like uh, trying to play this with the 3D glasses on, I'd probably hate it. 
Um, so, you know, like it'd be cool to have the glasses, but I'm not actually gonna play it that way, so I don't care. It's a really fun game. Is it worth $20? Eh, I don't know. I mean, if you like racing games, arcade racing games, demolition derby games, uh, I think this is probably a good pickup. I really like stuff like that, so I'm happy to have it in the collection. I mean, it's no test drive, Eve of Destruction, but it's it's still a fun game. I'm having a really good time messing around with it. Another cool one that I'm happy to have in the collection. And lastly, from the turning page, we grabbed this copy of Blue Dragon, which is another JRPG. Uh, they had this copy there for $20, which um, I think at this point, this is one of those games that went up in value. It didn't have like a super duper spike like some other Xbox 360 games, but it definitely did go up. Like I think it's more in the $30 to $40 range now. This copy that I have unfortunately doesn't have the manual and also the, the discs are like a little scuffed up. Like they're not, you probably can't even tell. Um, they're not like terrible. Like I did test it out and they, it, the discs work. Um, it's just, you know, they could be better. And then also this case is kind of, it's like one of those two disc cases that's kind of broken and the discs are kind of falling out a little bit. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not the best copy of Blue Dragon. I don't really know much about it other than the fact that uh, Akira Toriyama did the artwork for it. So it definitely has that like kind of Dragon Quest, Dragon Ball Z vibe to it. And yeah, I think it's just another JRPG on the 360 that people seem to really like. So I'm excited to have it, even though I'm not the biggest JRPG person. JRPGs on the 360, I will always grab them if they're 360 exclusive. So yeah, stoked to have this one as well. So yeah, here's the haul from today. It's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm not including the memory card in this because I'm just trying to forget that I even bought that. We're not gonna talk about the memory card anymore. So yeah, we have eight Xbox 360 games and a PS2 game in here. I think on the 360 games, we spent a little under $100, um, which isn't bad because there's like some pretty heavy hitting games in here, I would say, in terms of value. Uh, and then this PS2 game as well, I'm really excited to have that one too. So uh, not a bad day out at the game stores. I had a really good time uh, looking for Xbox 360 games. Um, and you know, there's still stuff out there. Like I was exaggerating in that intro. You can totally still find plenty of Xbox 360 games at your local game stores. They're all over the place in terms of sales. Like I feel like uh, there are a lot of Xbox 360 games that have been sold and are still in circulation. So I think it's gonna be a while before there's truly like an actual shortage of them anywhere. Like they're still gonna be everywhere for a very long time. And yeah, whether you've just started collecting for the 360 or if you've been doing it for a while, uh, let me know what some of your recent pickups are. I'd love to hear what you guys have been picking up and playing. For me, I've been playing a lot of this Child of Eden game because I think it's awesome. And then I've also been playing Fallout New Vegas on the 360. You know, I have it on the PC, but I've just been playing it on the 360 because that's more fun for me, I guess. If you like Xbox 360 stuff, here's another video I put out that you might like. Check it out. I'd appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, happy hunting. I'm Collector John. We'll see you guys in the next one.